Meet David Tang, a Chinese textile entrepreneur with big plans in Bangladesh. Since 1994, Mr. Tang has been traveling to the South Asian nation from his home in Jiangsu province with one thing in mind, expanding his fledgling textile business. Rising wages and ballooning costs have forced him to relocate part of his production from China to the outskirts of Dhaka. Today, he employs 140 Bangladeshi workers, making textiles for global brands like H&M, Zara, Primart and Aldi. With the help of backers from his hometown, he is now planning to branch out into garment making by building a new factory. China now no more the cheap price and then the due to cost is too much. So not, not, not only the worker salary matter and then even the other cost uh, day by day the increasing. In China, I, our daimyo are also around 150 workers. So first of all, salary is uh, too different. For example, now in China, uh, our worker salary uh, average around uh, 600 US dollar. But uh, in Bangladesh, the, we only, our work only around uh, 100 US dollar. Starting a business in a developing country like Bangladesh plagued by corruption and serious lack of infrastructure is no easy feat. While in Bangladesh, a Chinese businessman has had to navigate cultural and religious sensitivities, negotiate with striking workers, import all his machinery from China and train an unskilled local workforce with the help of his Chinese employees, some of whom are now fluent in Bengali. But at the end of the day, keeping costs down has helped him scale up his fledgling textile empire. Mr. Tang's story illustrates a wider trend. Low-end manufacturing, which helped drag China out of poverty, is slowly moving out of the country and relocating to other parts of Asia. We survey uh, a lot of our clients every year to figure out what's going on with their wages, how companies are responding to these higher wage trends. Um, so what we've seen in the last five years, every time we've done this survey, is manufacturing worker wages rising at maybe 10 to 15 percent on average. Uh, and we ask what a company is doing about it. Uh, the majority of those companies say we're moving inland. Uh, another group of companies say we're investing in more equipment so that people become more productive. The companies who leave, when we go and dig into our survey to see who those guys are, it's almost exclusively the manufacturers in textiles, shoes and toys, uh, the very simple stuff. It's mostly going into Bangladesh, Vietnam, India, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, um, these, these, these places. A recent survey by McKinsey of 29 chief purchasing officers of some of the best known European and US fashion manufacturers found that 55% expect to decrease for sourcing from China over the next five years. The Made in China label, long famed for its cheap price tag, is not so affordable these days. As a result, many companies are being forced to move up the value chain. I think this whole process is part of a piece. Uh, and if you go back and look at Taiwan in the 1970s and Japan in the 1950s, you know, they were exporting, both all of these Asian countries were exporting very cheap, very simple stuff, but they were very, very good at it. And as they did so, the companies who were doing that gradually learned how those things worked. They were ambitious. They went off and started their own companies doing upstream suppliers, or they started adding some design and R&D. And so the challenge for China really is now, can they make that leap up the supply chain? Can they add value? Can they design? While China remains the world's number one manufacturer and exporter of cheap clothing, for many, the Middle Kingdom is no longer as competitive as it once was. Ben Marino, Financial Times, Dhaka.